Welcome to the Coming Strength and Fitness Podcast. I'm Jill, coach and owner of CSNF. My team and I are here to help you take charge of your fitness and nutrition. In each episode, we'll provide you our best so that you can take your health to the next level. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with our host and coach, Alex Cottingham. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. It's just Jill and I in the studio. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Coming Strength and Fitness podcast. Jill, on a scale of 1 to 10, what number are you at today? <laughs> Mine, mine's always high. Uh, I'm at like 8.5. Are you naturally an optimistic person? I wouldn't say optimistic, but naturally in a good mood all the time. Is that by choice or by nature? I'd say 50-50. I'm sorry. I can't give you a straight answer today on anything. I can't. This, I can't. A, this episode is going to go great, everybody. I'm a mostly happy person. I'll say that. What about you? What are you today? Um, I am a... I was going to say an 8.7, but I think it's actually down to maybe like a 7.1 you now. You only needed to beat me by 0.2, and now it's gone down. <laughs> now it's gone down. <laughs> um, we were having a good day. We're, we're actually going to Hilton Head this weekend because... Um, um, we had an extended weekend, but little crew man woke up with a fever today. Oh, so crewby doobie. I know. We're hoping that um, it's just a quick little virus thing and he yeah. gets over it. It yeah. always happens right before we leave. Never fails. Anywhere. Never fails. But it's right. We're going to take good care of him. Um, but that's absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about Not today. Mm -hmm. Jill, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about recovery and rest and the importance of those things. Recovery? rest and the importance of those things so here at the gym we like to move and groove we like to push That's our bodies we, we like to exercise but when we do scientifically they're actually stressors on the body yes when we work out it is actually tearing down our muscle muscle fibers it is straining the tendons and ligaments i mean it's why after workout you literally lay in the back and you're like oh my gosh i need to just collect myself because it was just a hyper strain on our body which yes. is why if you have some sort of wearable it'll say your strain or your um your workout uh stimulus or level something like that because working out is a strain on the body it is if we only worked out and only focused on that, our health would would plummet, plummet, right? But what's cool about our bodies is that through proper rest and recovery, which is what we're going to talk about, we get better, we get faster, we get fitter, which is an absolute mind-boggling thing if you think about it. But if we don't rest and recover well, we're going to be behind the eight ball. We're not going to peak. We're not going to get fitter your greater risk of injury exactly mm -hmm. so jill first off let's start let's start with this is there and if there is what is the difference between rest and recovery there or is, is it the difference. same there is a difference there okay. is a difference so i want to start it off by saying that your training and your recovery are equally important okay okay so a lot of people put most of their emphasis on training but not enough on rest and recovery in order for your training to physically benefit you to the maximum extent, the recovery has to be there. It's, it's essential. It's not optional. And in order for your body to recover from what happens when you put the strain and the stress and the tearing down of muscle on it, you have to have the rest period or you will not see improvement in the gym for sure. So what you just said is that exercise and rec rest and recovery are equal. Just as important. So I could work out two or three times a day or two or three hours in one day, but I'm only sleeping five hours at night. Yeah. My balance is off. Your balance is off. The for scale sure. is not equal, meaning just as much emphasis or intensity or time or intentionality I put into my exercise, I need to be thinking on the back end when I'm not exercising about my rest and recovery. Yes. Would you agree? Yes. Also, and, before yeah. we keep going, I'm going to pause, not for a sponsored ad, but because we're actually um, getting some construction and some upgrades here at the gym. Yes. And you might hear some noises in the background, some clangs and bangs, some hammers, some different saws and cuts. Hey, that's okay. That, hey, that's okay. This is the real life. This is just a normal two Tuesday that we are rock and rolling in the studio here. So if you hear like, what is going on? There's actually some work being done at the uh, at CSNF, but we're improving. We're improving. Yeah. So I just wanted a quick little shout out and just preface that. So yes. Jill, let's hop back in. Okay. So for physical adaptation to happen, you have to have stress and the tearing down of muscle groups in your body. So that's what we do. We stress our bodies under load, under metabolic conditioning, under basically our fitness regimen. You actually don't get fit when you train. 
The fitness happens when you recover. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. So you're stressing your body out when you train, when you do weightlifting, when you do conditioning, when you do CrossFit. You're putting your body under physical strain and stress, and you're doing some tearing down of your muscle groups. That's how you get fit, right? The real magic doesn't happen in training. The real magic happens when you allow those muscle groups and your metabolic condi- system and your CNS to recover. That is how fitness happens. So I'm going to try to repeat that without the the really smart words. Sorry. In there. Um, no, that was good. <laughs> so basically, when we work out, that actually is not improving our fitness. Well, you're tearing yourself down. Gotcha. You, so we're bringing it, down our fitness, not necessarily our fitness levels, but just we're strained. We're, you're strained. We're not injured, but our body is um, under duress or under, yeah, stress. under stress. We need to properly rest or recover in order for us to see improvements. Correct. Got I it. can give you an example. Okay. If I told you to go out and do your one rep max back squat right now, you'd hit it. You'd hit a, you'd hit a number. Okay. If I told you to do that again in five minutes, could you? No. Could you do it tonight? Uh, probably not. Could you do it tomorrow? Maybe. Hit your one rep max two days in a row. Mm, I would. It would have to be a really good day. Probably right? not. But if I asked you to do it next week. Yeah, for maybe. sure. Yeah. Maybe, right? There's so, a much higher chance correct. next week. Right? Because you've given yourself time to recover. And it's not just your muscles. It's your your every system in your body, your central right. nervous system, your the conditioning systems in your body and your muscles. They have to recover in order to reach peak performance and fitness, which is what we're trying to do in here. So, so let's talk about the difference between rest and recovery. Rest and recovery. Okay. So if you take recovery and just put it in a bucket next to fitness, you have a few different ways that you can do recovery. Okay. You have rest and, and basically that's passive recovery. It's a quote unquote rest day. Okay. That doesn't mean you're sitting on the sofa eating bonbons all day. Right. That's actually the opposite of a rest day. Okay. It's like I'm making myself go backwards kind sure. of Sure. Because that may not necessarily yeah. help your body improve. Right, right. That's almost like putting so toxins in So we're not saying don't move. We're not saying, you know, eat garbage. We're saying actually the opposite. Let's, we're taking care of our body in a passive recovery type way. Maybe you're stretching. Maybe you're walking. Um, we're not getting the heart rate up. We're not using load. Um, and we're taking time to, you know, maybe meal prep and get some extra sleep, work on stress, read a book. You know, you're doing passive th- ways to recover. Okay. Um, we're still in the recovery bucket. And then you also have active recovery, which mm. is separate from passive recovery. And that is a day in which you get your heart rate up to zone two for about 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, just doing something where you could have a conversation with someone for about 20 or 30 minutes. That might be, you know, light biking, I can't have a conversation when I jog, but some people can. (laughs) Um, Hiking, you know, maybe some swimming, um, something that's going to get your heart rate up from resting, but not above rest, like zone two. Okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe work in some mobility, some, you know, self massage with a foam roller or a lacrosse ball, but that's more of an active recovery day. And they're both important. Really quick for um, our listeners, what do you mean when you say zone two? Uh, Yeah. So you have different zones all the way from zone one up to zone five um, for your heart rate. Zone five being like VO2 max, like this is like the fastest and hardest my body can go. Zone one being what we're doing right now. So zone two is going to be just above resting heart rate. And for an active recovery day, staying in that zone for 20 to 30 minutes doing something is, is going to flush out all of the stuff in your body that you've worked so hard to tear down, we're yeah. going to flush that out and we're yeah. going to allow it to recover with a little bit of movement. So, One thing that I have kind of piggybacking off of what you just said over the years, doing this 10 years of actively doing CrossFit, have been coaching it as when we're talking about working out and rest and recovery, that we're also varying the intensity level, like you said, mm-hmm. because if I were to go out there and literally try to um, do a workout at a hundred percent like intensity. Like Murph at zone five. That's yeah. impossible, right. right? And I'm not going to do that every single day. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to do a more muscular endurance type workout and in intensity, maybe like 75, 80% on Monday, but then I'm going to do four quick little four minute AMRAPs on Tuesday, get the intensity up a little bit, and then maybe do a longer partner working on Wednesday. Varying those intensities allows my body to kind of recover because I'm not taxing the same, whether energy, energy pathway mm-hmm. every single time, mm-hmm. which is the beauty in what we do here mm-hmm. is you're, that's why we do long workouts, short workouts, heavy workouts, light workouts, because we're not taxing the same thing every single time. We're getting you ready for all of those, mm-hmm. but we're also, it's more sustainable because we're changing it up every single day. Constantly varied. Did that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Joe, where does sleep come into the conversation? It's in the recovery bucket. Okay. Um, sleep is probably your number one recovery uh, supplement. I'll just call it that. Hmm. Um, your body does a lot of healing and recovery during sleep time. Um, just, you know, again, hitting all of those different systems, mental, emotional, all of the things right. happen when you're sleeping right? and when you're recovering. So sleep is huge in the recovery bucket. Um, I've had people ask before, you know, I have to, if I have to get up at 5am and go to the gym, but I'm really tired, should I choose sleep or gym? It's a great question. It's a great question. And it's highly dependent. <laughs> I would say it de- my answer is it depends. It always depends, but sleep is that important. It's that important. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of sleep. You are. Um, I've done some research and reading, which I think is worth mentioning a couple different things that I found um, on how sleep literally impacts not just every biological system, but every cell in your body. Um, For example, the... uh, your cardiorespiratory system or just your cardiovascular system with your heart health, that this is crazy. So two times of the year, we either gain an hour of sleep or lose our sleep. It's called daylight savings time. When we gain an hour or sorry, when we lose an hour of sleep globally, there is a 24% increase in heart attacks the very next day. Mm -hmm. So when the whole world loses an hour of sleep, all the hospitals see a 24% increase in heart attacks the very next very next day because of that lack of sleep. That's Mm -hmm. a common denominator every single year. You can look it up, research, all that. When the opposite is true, when we gain an hour of sleep, there's a 21% reduction in not just heart attacks, but car accidents and suicide actually, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. Mm -hmm. The other one, I'll, I'll give you two more, one or two, the digestive system. People who live in sleep deprivation, which is chronically getting less than seven hours of sleep each night, your body will make more of your appetite hormone and less of your fullness hormone, resulting in eating more than necessary. Mm-hmm. Because when you live in sleep deprivation, it affects your hormonal balance, and which says, hey, I'm actually more hungry than what my body needs and less full. Those hormones aren't regulated, resulting in eating more than necessary. Mm-hmm. That's why many, stati- many, res- many research statistics have shown that chronically s- – People who live in sleep deprivation, getting less than seven hours of sleep, are statistically more overweight Mm -hmm. than people who get more than seven hours of sleep each Mm -hmm. night. The last one is if you were to get less than six hours of sleep over one night, this is crazy, just an acute bout, your immune system, your killer T cells, which is like the first um, line of defense, line of defense with immunity, a normal cough or sinus, a virus, anything, that performance drops by 70%, mm-hmm. which is if you get a crappy night's sleep, you are way more susceptible to get sick the very next day, mm-hmm. which is why, like you said, it's not just for peak performance in the gym, but it's for your overall health. Absolutely. That sleep impacts everything. Like you said, if it was bottled up in a supplement, it would be banned it because be. of how... in. It impacts everything. How it impacts everything. Yes. Thank you. So that's that's all I have to say about so, sleep. I mean, yes. Yeah, so sleep, very important to recovery. Extremely important. Top very, of the list. Very. Um, so I want to kind of talk about recovery in terms of weekly and then also long-term recovery. Mm. So if you think about recovery in terms of weekly, um, obviously we have classes Monday through Saturday here. And then we have hybrid access available so people can come in any time. But... Alex, what would you say in a week, what should someone's ideal training schedule look like taking into account good rest and recovery? That's a great question. Um, What would you say, you know, you have a client come in and you're prescribing a training regimen for someone who wants to be generally fit, lose some weight, improve their performance, and is here for the long haul? Well, the first thing I think of is the the initial CrossFit prescription, which is three days on, one day off, or yes. five days on, two days off, mm-hmm. um, because research has shown that after that third day, intensity and performance starts to drop. Dr- drop because rest and recovery can't keep up. Mm-hmm. Or for our typical people who work five days and then rest two days, mm-hmm. you kind of maintain. But that's why on Thursdays, Thursdays is typically a little bit different of a workout because intensity, if you were coming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, intensity starts to drop because recovery has not caught up yet. So it mm-hmm. depends on your schedule, but I mean, it's normally three on, one off, or five on, two mm-hmm. off. So you're not prescribing working out every day? No, I don't work out every no. day. No, Yeah. So weekly recovery is important. If you're working out six days a week for 60 minutes or more, that's a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot. I don't do that. Right. Um, so 
for me, what works for me personally is Monday through Wednesday training. I do an active recovery day on Thursday, hmm. 20 to 30 minutes of zone two, plus hmm. a lot of mobility and stretching, maybe some foam rolling, things like that. Joe, what would you tell the person who is doing that? Who's doing what? Six days a week, 60 plus minutes may take something off on Sunday, but they're pretty mm-hmm. much living in overstrain rather than training. Yeah. Yeah. Overtraining rather than fully balanced. I think some of it is dependent. Again, um, I would ask how they're feeling. How long have they been doing that? How long do they plan to do that? Right. Um, But speaking long term, that could be detrimental to overall fitness. Yeah. I mean, that's almost why I, it's minimum of one week up to three to four times throughout the year. I pretty much try to do every quarter is I'll take one full week off of it of training entirely. I'll still walk and I'll still play with the kids and I'll still get my steps in. Mm -hmm. But as far as the intensity, that full week allows my body to basically charge back up to 100%. Yeah. And I was going to talk about that in terms of long-term recovery. I was just setting you up, Jill. (laughs) Thank you so much. Um, But back to my schedule. So for me personally, and this is what I would recommend to, to anybody is to take an active recovery day in the middle of the week and then take a full rest day on the weekend. Um, so that's what I do personally. I have found it to be very beneficial and yeah. anyone that I advise to do the same finds it very beneficial. There's also a mental component to overtraining where people feel like if they don't go intensely or don't lift something heavy every single day of the week, they're going to backtrack somehow. But that's actually the reverse. Yeah. Um, the more that you put your body under those stressors, the more often you do that, actually the less fit you're going to be. And you yeah. can actually stop seeing improvement in the in the gym when you're overtraining. Yeah. So having a couple of days a week where you're just focused on recovery and, you know, foam rolling and mobilizing and stretching and doing some zone two, you know, hiking walking, biking, jogging. That's extremely important to your longevity as a fitness person. So what you just said is three days, hard work, Thursday or that fourth day is like you said, more of an active recovery. It could be any day. It could be Wednesday. It could be Friday. I mean, it's up to how your schedule works. That's just how mine works. Yeah. But just for you, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, hard. Thursday's the active recovery. Friday, Saturday's training pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And Sunday's a full rest day. Sunday's a full rest day. I still walk. And I definitely do 20 to 30 minutes of stretching every Sunday. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So talk about long term. Yeah. Long term. You also want to look at it like as a year, as a 12 month span. And just like you said, for you, what you do every quarter, which is like every three months, you take an extended amount of recovery. Mm. It's really interesting. And you can probably speak to this like sometimes it works well with vacation. You know, you just kind of on vacation. That's how I line it up. You come back. And somehow you you feel so good. You're like, I just PR'd my back squat. It's been five years. Like, Literally. how did that happen? I just was on vacation. But it's because you've allowed your body to recover. A few things that that does, you get fully recovered. Those little tweaks, aches, and pains, like that little thing in my shoulder, that little thing on my foot, gone, gone. because you've given it full rest. And yes. then you can go back harder than you did before mm. because you allowed your body to fully recover during that week. Um. What has helped you in terms of rest and recovery go the distance? You've been doing this, not just, we just talked about 12 months. You've been doing this for probably 144 months. A lot of months. 12 years, 13 years. I'll be honest, I had to learn the hard way. So when I started CrossFit, gosh, long, long time ago, I uh, really thought that the volume and the amount of training I did was what was going to make the difference for me. And it took me a long time to figure out that that rest day and that recovery day were even more important than those hard training days. Hmm. And I learned from experience. Um, So what I found, and this has been over the last five years, is how important those days are to my overall performance and longevity, for sure. What I have seen in not everybody, but specific people or specific groups of people that I talk to is like, well, look at Rich Froning, look at his volume or look at like, well, he's a professional athlete. (laughs) Exactly. Like our bodies can actually withstand a lot more volume or a lot more load than what we typically are giving it. And like, yeah, that's his job. Mm -hmm. Like, and you don't, you also don't see all the hours of rehab and Cairo and PT and masseuse and sleep every day that he's, it's a full time, all consuming gig that unless you're like, Hey, I want to go to the games and be the best of the best, which, yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about that. But there's going to be a lot more lifestyle modifications, a lot more sacrifices that go into that. And we are not rich froning or we are not like professional athletes. We just want to optimize health and fitness. Right. The protocols look different for a professional football player than they do for flag football. Exactly. I mean, it's a very different approach altogether. So, um, and you know, some things that happen as a result of overtraining, I mean, decrease in performance, overall fatigue, mental burnout, stress, 
injury, all these things can happen from overtraining. If you're experiencing any of those things that I just said, take a look at your schedule yeah. and make sure that you have those rest and recovery days built in so that you don't fall victim to some of these basically side effects of overtraining. So, As we're kind of rounding third, I'll just share this and I'll, I want to sh- um, give you the the platform to share your last takeaway. But I remember learning this. I was an exercise science major in college and we were talking about overtraining. The first time I experienced this was more of an acute bout. Um, and the professor's like, hey, what is one of the first symptoms or signs um, that you're overtrained? And I rose my hand because I knew exactly because <laughs> you I, probably experienced I experienced it, it like a yeah. year ago. And I said, the difficulty falling asleep. Hmm. Because it was my first CrossFit competition ever. I went... I don't know if, I've, if I could, if this is right to say, but I went balls of the wall, a hundred percent, like all out every single workout. And I'm not kidding you. I went home and collapsed, but my body was so unfamiliar with that stimulus that it probably took me two or three hours to fall asleep. I was like, I'm so exhausted. Why can't I fall asleep? Yeah. And actually digging into the research, it actually messes up your circadian rhythm mm-hmm. when you overtrain and all that stress in your, um, and all that, um, strain on your body, it actually throws you off. And he's like, yeah, that's one of the first signs and symptoms. And then, like you said, it goes to uh, decreased performance, mental burnout, energy, mood, stuff Mm -hmm. like that. But I was like, wow. And I experienced that. And now as I've increased my volume and gotten more familiar with that, I I don't think I've ever experienced it. But that was back in, gosh, 2014. Yeah. And I was like, what is this feeling? I'm so physically tired, but my my brain yes. won't shut down. Yeah. And that was just a sign of I was overtrained that day. So so what we're trying to do here is take our experiences <laughs> over the years and help you not to make the same mistakes we have. Exactly. So, I mean, th- that's how we advise all of our athletes here and our members is the importance of rest and recovery. Gosh, it Because is. more isn't better. Better is better. Gosh, that is so true. It, sleep is the most underrated part of health and yes. fitness ever. Jill, yep. what's your takeaway? Rest and recovery are just as important as training. Equal. You need to prioritize both in your weekly schedule and make sure you're taking care of your recovery so that you can improve in your fitness and your health. To do your best, you need your rest. That's facts. That's what my mom told me growing up and she coined it and I give all her, give all credit to her. She's like, to do your best, you need your rest. Yeah, because you don't want to really be around me if I wake up on the wrong side <laughs> of bed and I, and I didn't get my beauty sleep. So. Exactly. <laughs> um, Jill, last 60 seconds and we are done with this episode. Um, it's the open season, CrossFit Open right now. Mm-hmm. So piggybacking off of our last episode, what in your opinion was the worst CrossFit Open workout you've ever done? It was What thr- scars you? Oh, I it's right there in my front of my brain. Yep. Uh, it was thrusters and double unders. Thruster was it the ten rounds nine and yes. thirty five? Yeah. Really? I can't tell you how many times I did it. <laughs> it was more than maybe you can count on one hand. So it was ten rounds of Yeah. No, was it nine rounds? It was 10 rounds, 10 rounds of nine thr- 35 double unders and nine thrusters. Something. Something like that. Some obscene amount of both. Yes. And at the time, my double unders weren't great. Um, and I didn't get the score that I wanted. So that it has been singed into my brain. And that's the year I hired a coach to teach me how to do double unders better. Really? Yes. Um, there have been multiple for me. One that stands out is 21, 18, 15, 12, 9, 6, 3 of thrusters and bar facing burpees. I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> oh, yeah, literally. Another one was the one we just tested here at the gym 33, 27, 21, 59 of thrusters and uh, double fran. And um, double fran. Yep. Pull chest of bars. Mm-hmm. Another one was 27, 21, 59 of rowing and thrusters. Mm, I didn't even throw I remember thrusters that. in there. I remember after that rowing and thruster one. Thinking that my legs were paralyzed. Yes. Thinking I was paralyzed from the waist down <laughs> and wondering if I'd ever move my legs again. Yeah. So the moral of the story is we needed a lot of rest and recovery <laughs> yes, after these workouts. <laughs> yes, we do. Slept for 48 hours straight. Yes. Um, Jill, thanks for sharing your knowledge. Our main uh, takeaway is prioritize rest, prioritize recovery. It really can be that secret weapon or that cheat code or that thing you've been missing in your training. You've been crushing it, but we need you to crush it in the rest and recovery bucket as well. So you can crush it for the rest of your life. Go the distance, baby. Yeah. Jill, thanks so much. We'll see you another episode. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us today, friends. I hope today's conversation helped you gain a greater understanding of the mission at CSNF to change lives through fitness and nutrition. 
check us out on social media or reach out at comingstrengthandfitness.com. We would love to help you take your health to the next level. We'll see you next time.